We've come a long way in eight years. But how's the iPhone success stack up? Hey guys, e Dog here. And if you haven't guessed already, I'm giving you a review of the iPhone 6S. This is the 2015 iPhone release, and I'm reviewing it after three months of use. The unboxing of this product can be found in the top of the description. The case I've been using is the red silicon case. You can also find the unboxing of that in the description as well. between 50 and 100 
100 pounds up front to get the phone. With 36 to 38 pounds per month, if you want a decent amount of mobile data in minutes, with the phone starting at 539 pounds for 16 gig model, 619 pounds for 64 gig model, 699 pounds for the 128 gig model of contract. That is compared to the reduced price of the iPhone 6. general tech world but you can see, get the same quality screen at an even cheaper price on budget phones Apple aren't ignoring the higher resolution screens because the retina iMacs have 4k 21.5 inch and 5k 27 inch screens another thing Apple didn't put in the iPhone 6s was OLED for those of you that don't know what OLED is it is instead of turning on the pixel making it black the pixel never comes on if it needs to be black. We did see this kind of screen technology in the Apple Watch and it looked amazing and several other smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S6 and Note 5. So why can't we see this with the 6S? Apple's reasoning is OLED screens don't last as long as normal LCD screens but there are probably other reasons. People usually replace their phone every two years, but nobody replaces a watch unless it's broken or too old that it's died. So why would you put technology that doesn't last as long in something that you may have ten times as long? One of the great bits about the iPhone 6 is display but it was clear, bright and laminated to the glass, but also insanely colourful. So to use the same thing on the iPhone 6s makes sense after all. The lower pixel count does mean that it can be thinner and the battery can last longer, thanks to having fewer pixels to power. Moving on from the screen itself to a cool bit of tech that makes this phone revolutionary. If you haven't already guessed, I'm just talking about 3D Touch, this new sci-fi way of interacting with our phones. Not really. It is just a thing that allows you to get more menus by pressing on your screen in such a way that if you did it on any other device, you would damage it. Apple Watch doesn't have multiple levels. So you can use a special command on 3D Touch called a peak and pop. Sadly 
though. I can go a long time without using it because there currently aren't enough things you can do with a screen of this size. On a smartwatch, I can understand why you'd have a pressure sensitive display because of its small size, but not on a phone as much. To be fair, 3D touch does have its uses. things like Force Touch, which can be found on the Mac and the Apple Watch. For example, you can preview a web page in Safari. But what makes 3D Touch is that Force Touch on the Mac and the Apple Watch doesn't have multiple levels. So you can use a special command on the 3D Touch called a Peak and Pop. Touch ID. I won't say it's been too quick, as others have, but I have had issues where it hasn't registered my finger three to four times in a row and has prompted me to put my passcode in. For example, and then eventually it will tell me to enter my passcode because Touch ID has been disenabled because it's been entered wrong so many times. When it does work, it does unlock extremely fast. On to battery life. It's an iPhone. The battery isn't perfect, but nothing will be ever perfect. It is enough to get me through a day, but I have had an issue where when I wake up in the morning and turn my phone on, the battery status has been 15 to 20%. When I go to unlock my phone and put my passcode in, it will quite often die. So I will reach down, grab my charger, plug it in, 
it will quickly boot back up again and it will be 5% lower than four, so from 10 to 15% charge but it never dies because it's out of charge I'm hoping this is just a bug they will be fixed in a later version of iOS but it is quite annoying especially when I don't have a charger at hand now that the major updates have been covered, let's talk about the less minor stuff. First of all, speaker quality. Here was a test made using one of the songs I made for e Music. see the sound quality from the speaker is incredibly good so let's talk about microphone quality just for comparison the voiceover for sweet machine version 6 was recorded on the iphone 6s performance wise the iphone 6s has apple's a9 chip with the M9 motion co-processor. But what kind of real world results does this give? So now I'm going to run a Geekbench test. As you can see, in the bottom corner it tells you what each process is doing. So it scored 2,494 points on the single core score and 4,244 on the multi core score. This is because the iPhone 6S has two cores. If we compare the single core score to the iPad Pro, that got a single core score of 3,224. Compared to last year's iPhone 6, that's only got 1,613 on the single core score, so a significant gain. On the multi core score, the iPad Pro got 5,466, and the iPhone 6 scored 2,886. That is compared to the 4,244 of the iPhone 6s. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press that like button and get subscribed. If you have any suggestions for something I could do or any improvements you think I can make, Please don't be afraid to put them in the comments. Also, why not check out the eDog Media Twitter page?